always good to see a nice smiling face and having a drink. Oh. My honoree today is the only president ever elected that did not win his own state. Now, what? now I always thought if you don't, if you can't win your home state, if your own people don't like you, why should the country like you? What do you think? If I was running for an office, like I wouldn't expect Ohioans to necessarily back me. And I would hope they wouldn't back me because I was from Ohio. I would hope they would back me because they believe in what I'm trying to do with the country, what I'm trying to support. Hey, saw you listening in. Come on over. Yeah, join us. Grab a bar stove. Grab your favorite beverage. I got some stories to tell you. Let's toast some history. Yes. <sighs> now that's good history. Welcome back to A Toast to History. Now, today's honoree is very controversial. There's been a lot of hate against this man. Some deserved, some not. But, hey, if you're tuning into this show, I am going to do all 45 of these men. That's what's going to happen. And it's their birthday, so I'm going to put them in the best light as I can because it's their birthday. And every man on their birthday deserves a toast. I'm not a Trump supporter. All this stuff here has been donated by a friend of mine, a very loving friend who worked on his campaign. And she had a lot of stuff. And I felt, you know what, this is a show. It's his birthday. We're going to roll with it. So, keeping that in mind, I present to you... President Donald Trump. Welcome back to A Toast to History. Today, I had to get all dressed up in a lot of fancier garb today. Because today, we have an actual birthday we're celebrating. Because this is the first president we've done on the show that he's actually still alive and well. This is Donald Trump's 75th birthday. He's lived for three quarters of a century, everybody. That's a pretty big birthday. No wonder the man didn't answer my calls or my people and his people must not have got to terms. Tried to get him on the show. But today, we're going to go over what you do and don't know about Donald Trump. Let's let this celebration begin. Donald Trump's early life, he was born in Queens, New York. Yes, man's a New Yorker. Makes sense. Hey, I'm driving here! It's not a very good New York accent, it's not, but that's the best I got. Man was known as a prankster. His siblings were annoyed as hell by him. Well, a lot of you people out there are annoyed as hell by him, so you guys can probably relate. But he was a real big prankster. So much that his parents enrolled him into military school. Teach him some spit and polish. But hey, he actually does pretty well. He actually wins neatest dressed and hey it makes sense every time i see him in an outfit you never see his tie out of place i've never seen donald trump in jeans you ever seen him in jeans or shorts no i've never seen him in jeans or shorts yeah spiffy is dressed i, I get it and now it makes a little bit more sense where he got it from man was huge into baseball played for this military academy played baseball for him. final game of the season Team rival is a 2-2 count. The winning run is on base. And Donald Trump comes to the plate. Swing and a pitch. Boom. Knocks in the gapper. Not a very good hit, but knocks in the gapper. Scores the winning run. They win the game. Now, he actually has scouts wanting him to become a Major League Baseball player. And he turns it down. He loves baseball. You see him at many baseball games. But um, uh, he turns it down because he feels like college education is more important. Just think of it, everybody. Instead of President Donald Trump, 
You could have had baseball player Donald Trump. Then you could have heckled him for only $20 to go down to the stadium. Nah, it's better this way. Now, we've always known that Donald Trump is being a businessman. It wasn't the last four years where we were like politician, a.k.a. President Donald Trump. No, he's a businessman. His first major investment was the Commodore Hotel. It's on one of the most busiest streets in New York City. Their crown jewel, if you will. And there was this building, the Commodore Hotel, that was failing badly. It was actually condemned. They were like, no, there's no way this is going to be able to work. He takes it over. He refurbishes it and makes it not an eyesore and actually puts it into a very profitable business. He continues with his business strategy and his philanthropy. There's a park in New York where there's an ice skating rink. And he decides to rebuild it at cost because he has the money. He makes no profit from this. He just does it because it's good for the community. And he rebuilds the ice rink in 90 days. It reopens. That would have taken the city nine years. <sighs> What's the matter with that? What's the matter with somebody who decides to give back to his own community? And then this leads, as his business is growing to, what we call the Trump Towers. The iconic, when you think of Trump, you think of the Trump Towers in New York City that he built in the 1980s. As much as you can say about Donald Trump, nobody can say he's not a family man. Most of his family works for him. And not sits there at home and collects a check. They work for him. They have jobs. Now, he's a billionaire. He could send someone home and just say, hey, here's your allowance for the year, the month, whatever he wants to do. It's his money. But no, you have to earn it. He puts you in jobs. He's on his third wife now, but each and even the ones before him show respect. I've watched several documentaries trying to re get ready for this video, and I've not heard of one of his wives say anything bad against him. I haven't heard him say bad things to one of his wives. That's respect. That shows, you know, even though, hey, something didn't work out. We know things don't work out all the time. There's not always a Cinderella story. But there's a respect. And that's why I feel we need to give this man just a little bit of respect. Whether we like his decision or not. I should clarify, you gave all your wives jobs, and it was one at a time. You didn't have them all working together, because that would be pretty difficult. And it's not like, hey, you do the dishes today. No, it was an actual job like running a casino. Other than being a businessman, you can't argue the man was totally involved in media. You can't think of downtown without hearing, you're Fire! Other TV shows he was in, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, The Nanny, Zoolander, SNL. Who does not love SNL? Home Alone 2. I'm sorry, the only good part of that movie is Tim Curry, and then when he shows him to the elevator. And the WWE. This is where I love him even more. Hence, my shirt, Million Dollar Man shirt, WrestleMania 4. WrestleMania 5, also at the Trump Plaza. And now WrestleMania 23, hair versus hair match. Vince McMahon, Donald Trump, both picked their champions. Now we all know, everybody in the universe knew, everybody in public knew, Donald Trump was not going to get his head shaved. Good match. You can't say Donald Trump, whether he's doing a press conference, whether he's in business with his casinos, or whether he's on screen, he's always been an entertainer. He is an author of acclaimed book, The Art of the Deal. We're still the best seller in New York, and it's still today a very high commodity book for most people going into business. It makes sense no one knows who you were. We have not known you since the 1980s. Oh, wait a minute. I was born in 83. Yes, we've known you for over 40 years. You're the same man then. You're the same man now. I'm glad it's a shock. 
We're not going to go over the presidency of Donald Trump today. Because as history, you got to let it settle. We don't know everything yet. We won't know anything for a while. That's how history works. Sorry for those who want it now, because that's the kind of thing the world wants. That's not how history works. So, but I will tell you his presidential first that did happen. He is the first that was not a politician or a military war hero to win the election. Everyone has risen to the ranks of politics and become president, except like William Henry Harrison, Zachary Taylor, Andrew Jackson. All these people, they were war heroes. Ulysses S. Grant. He's the first one to not have any of those accolades and still win. He's the first president that did not win his home state. Now, before his presidency, I said the same thing. If you can't win your home state, if your own state doesn't like you, why should the American people like you? You shouldn't win. That was my opinion, but he won. He did it. He's the first one to ever do it. He was born on Flag Day. What can be more American than that? We only have one president who was born on the 4th of July. He was born on Flag Day. So you know what? If you like Donald Trump, celebrate his birthday. If you're like, no, and I'm not going to celebrate his birthday, I tell you, celebrate Flag Day today. He's also the first person to, that the Simpsons predicted. And pretty accurately, if you watch the episode, you see him going on the escalator, waving his hands, and you can look up a video of him coming out, waving his hand in the same way. The map of the states he took. From the Simpsons to this, you can see the same pretty much pattern. Wow. Next time, I'm just going to watch the Simpsons episode, see who they pick, and go from there. Because you know what? At least they're entertaining. You had to call me up on my theory. You, no one has ever won without winning their home state, and you had to do it. How the hell did you pull that off? Now some facts in your history book that you didn't know about Donald Trump, even though most of your history books are so outdated, they don't have Trump in it yet. But we're not going to go into that today. He gave his entire presidential salary to charity. Just like Hoover. Just like Kennedy. Like a couple other presidents. He didn't need the money. So he gave it to charity. It's like, no, I don't need it. These people need it more. So in the end, he is worth less after he entered presidency than when he came in. For four years, he couldn't be in control of his own companies. Do the math. He's not worth as much. Not to say he's hurting. This man is not sleeping on a street corner after his presidency. He's not doing that. But he has still earned less money than if he'd have been not president at all. Now, he is the richest president of the United States, defeating John F. Kennedy. John F. Kennedy was worth $12 million at the time of his presidency. With inflation, you add it, he was $100 million today. He's worth $2 billion. Quite a big jump. Not to discredit you, John F. Kennedy. JFK, I love you. I just did your video. If you guys did, want to check it out, go check it out. He still did some good, and he still made some bank, but just it's not $2 billion. Sorry there. He was moved and witnessed by Billy Graham. So he is a Christian. Now, does he have some Christian problems with his um, uh, showing that he's a Christian? We can debate that. But we can all debate that. There are days you can look at me and you can't tell I'm a Christian. I'm sorry, especially when something goes wrong on my job site and you... If you heard my sound bites, you'd be like, wow, that guy's a Christian? We all have that. Anybody who doesn't, you're either a preacher or a liar. Tell you, Donald, I know you've had some sound bites in the press that weren't very Christian. When I'm on a job site and I smash my finger or cut myself, I don't scream, Amen! What would Jesus do? I don't do that. This man owns a winery in Virginia. 
that's run by a woman. Put her in charge. 50% of his campaign staff is female. Unheard of. Unheard of. Not going to say that it's never happened, but it's very rare. Personally, his pastor is a female. His personal counselor is a female. He helps support Republican National Committee Chairman Ronna McDaniel to get to that spot. She's still there. She's still ahead of the RNC. But this one I have to pay a little extra attention to. Because the Supreme Court, when you get in, you're there till you die or retire. Those are the only two options for you. Die or retire. A spot opened up. And when a spot opens up, the President of the United States, it's his duty to fill it. And he filled it with Amy Connie Barrett. Why am I so excited about Amy Connie Barrett? Right here, baby. She's from the University of Notre Dame. She's a fighting Irishman. Fighting Irish. And she's a golden domer. The first one to ever be part of the Supreme Court. A final toast to Donald Trump. As I said in the Kennedy video, you know what? The man had no reason to go into politics. Had a silver spoon in his mouth. Could sit by and let things happen and not give two craps about the American people. And he was worth a hundred million dollars. He was worth $2 billion. Why? Why? If I had $2 billion, would I get up off my butt and do stuff? I have to soul search. I might want to live through life and not do a damn thing. This man felt he had more to give. And I'm sorry. Him and 44 others have that island, which is the presidency. And I feel nobody other than the people on that island should judge him because you don't know what it takes. Has he said controversial things? Yes, we can debate about it all day. But you know, he's still your president. Whether you recognize her enough, unless you want to go to another country, he was your president, and he should be treated as such. So, happy 75th birthday, Mr. President. You know, I don't know if you're going to come back for another term. And I know you're... Live in the White House was skeptical. But you know what? I know you shaked some foundations. And you said, showed what America is all about. Land of opportunity. Now that's good history.